Hello all, in this video I would like to discuss about Davis steering gear mechanism in third unit from kinematics of machinery. So why we are using the steering gear mechanisms? So we will use steering gear mechanisms mainly to turn the vehicle, either to take a right turn or left turn, we should use a steering gear mechanism. We are having different types of steering gear mechanism. One is Ackerman steering gear mechanism and the other one is Davis steering gear mechanism. In Ackerman steering gear mechanism, all the pins are turning pairs only. But in Davis steering gear mechanism, we are having sliding pairs also. So, Davis steering gear mechanism will satisfy the fundamental equation of steering gears at all positions. So this one is the Davis steering gear mechanism and if you see here, here uh, this one is AB is the front axle. To the front axle AB we are having two stub axles. To the front axle AB we are having two stub axles. This is one stub axle and this one is the other stub axle. To this stub axles we are fixing the wheels. This one is the right wheel this one is right wheel and this one is the left side wheel so along with the stub, stub axles we are also having two arms uh, if you see here here a m a m is one arm b n b n is another arm a m this is one arm and b n is another arm to these arms we are having sliders one slider at the point C and another slider at point D and these two sliders are connected by using a link and this link will always be at a fixed distance of A. The distance between the link and the front axle is A. So this is normally this is the position when the vehicle is moving in the straight line path or linear position or a straight road. So the angle between the arm and the vertical axis, here the angle is alpha on the right hand side. The same angle will exist on the left hand side due to symmetry. The angle between the arm and the vertical axis, this angle is alpha. Right, this is when the vehicle is moving in a straight line path. Let's say the our vehicle is taking a turn, our vehicle is taking a left turn. When the vehicle is taking a left turn, this wheel moves towards this direction, lower direction. This stub axle will move in the lower direction by an angle of theta. This angle is theta. And here also this angle also will move, this stub axle will move in the upward direction. This will move with an angle of pi. On the right hand side, this the movement of the axle is pi. On the left hand side, the movement of the axle is theta this axle and this arm this axle and this arm is one link only so when this stub axle is moving in the downward direction by theta angle this arm also will move by same angle this arm will move by theta angle so what is the resultant angle between the vertical axis and the stub axle the resultant angle here it is alpha alpha is the total angle alpha minus theta is the resultant angle between the arm and the vertical axis this is on the left hand side if you see on the right hand side here the stub axle is moving by angle of pi the stub axle is moving by angle of pi when the stub axle is moving this arm also moves this arm also moves by pi angle so the resultant angle between this arm and the vertical axis, this resultant angle is alpha plus pi. This resultant angle between the arm and the vertical axis alpha plus pi. Here this resultant angle is alpha minus theta. So based on this um, and other lengths also, here the distance between this arm the distance between the link connecting the two sliders and the front axle this distance i am taking it as a and the initial position when the vehicle is moving in the straight line path the distance between the slider and the vertical axis this distance is d 
here also same due to symmetry and when the vehicle is taking a turn when the vehicle is taking a left turn this slider is moved by a distance of x towards the left the same will happen on this side also this side also it will move by x towards the left so that it is making a turn uh, left turn so based on this uh, we have to obtain the angle alpha such that the vehicle will always obey the fundamental steering gear mechanism so if you see here so from those triangles we can easily obtain tan alpha plus pi equal to d plus x by a tan alpha plus pi equal to d plus x by a so where, where from where we are getting this one if you see here tan alpha plus pi in the sense it is on the right hand side so so if you see here triangle a c p this triangle from this triangle this is the alpha plus pi tan alpha plus pi is equal to opposite side by adjacent side opposite side is p c dash by adjacent side is p a p c dash by p a and p c dash is nothing but a d plus x p c dash is equal to d plus x and p a is the length between the distance between the arm and the front axle the distance is a so tan alpha plus pi is equal to d plus x by a so this one tan alpha plus pi is equal to d plus x by a similarly tan alpha equal to d by a if from this if you solve you will get the tan pi value tan pi equal to x by a square plus d square plus dx similarly this one is on the right hand side of the wheel if you solve the left hand side of the wheel you will get the same equation for tan theta if you substitute tan pi and tan theta in fundamental equation cot pi minus cot theta equal to c by b you will get the alpha angle tan alpha equal to c by 2b if the if the Davis steering gear mechanism is satisfying tan alpha equal to c by 2b then the Davis steering gear mechanism will satisfy the fundamental equation at every part right otherwise it will not obey the fundamental equation of gearing so normally the Davis steering gear mechanism will always satisfy the fundamental equation right